Hello, I am Carol Dortch Wright, a senior team member at the Citizens Campaign. I'd like to welcome you all to our press conference today, where we are announcing um, 10 citizen leadership centers based primarily at community colleges around the nation. We are excited to tell you that the leadership centers aim to give citizens the tools and know-how to exercise their power beyond the ballot, equipping them with the pragmatic problem-solving skills needed to work together, yes, together, despite their political differences. Over the next two years, the Citizen Campaign plans to establish an additional 100 leadership centers. With us on this historic, we're calling it a historic press conference, is Harry Pazinski, the founder and CEO of the Citizens Campaign. Today, you'll hear from leaders and professors representing um, uh, Houston Community College, um, the City Colleges of Chicago. We're gonna go out to the West Coast and you'll hear from a representative from Bakersfield College as well. For those individuals representing the media uh, that are with us today, uh, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions following our presentations. I'd like to announce also that a media release will be sent out immediately following this conference. Again, thank you for being here with us. We are also streaming live on Facebook. So I'd like to start off our conference, our, our media conference today with the individual that I said it was the founder and the CEO of the Citizens Campaign. Harry, I believe you've been waiting for this time um, 20 plus years. Won't you start us off today? Welcome to, to your press conference and this great day. Harry? Thank you. Thank you very much, Carol. And, and you're right, I've been waiting, uh, but not just waiting, working to make sure that our children would have a functioning democracy. And that's why I'm, I'm so very happy to be able to announce the 10 citizen leadership centers that will be uh, the foundation for what we hope will be a new national uh, citizen leadership service. Um, I'd like uh, to pull up a map just to give you an idea of the uh, uh, geographical breadth of this venture, if I may. And you can see that we have leadership centers uh, all along the East Coast over to Texas, up the West Coast and into the center of the country um, in uh, Colorado Springs and Chicago. And we have a uh, hundred more uh, planned to be built within the next two years, maybe even more than that if we're fortunate. So uh, take, take a look at that and see what uh, is the foundation uh, for uh, what we hope will be a new dimension uh, in American leadership, one that's citizen driven. And if you'll return uh, to the screen, uh, um, I'm, I'm going to explain that these citizen leadership centers really are um, uh, designed to pave the way for a national public service that's designed um, to add this new dimension uh, of American leadership. Um, like any public service, they'll provide two things, training and the opportunity for citizens to serve their country. So the training will be in how to exercise your power beyond the ballot. Uh, most people are not aware that they have much power beyond the ballot. We vote and we hand over our responsibilities to our representatives, and then we sit by in frustration if they're not solving the problems, and even worse, if they're pointing fingers at each other. But we do have power beyond the ballot. We, we are going to be teaching people the power of a pragmatic problem-solving skills. The, the, those kind of skills that will allow us to come together on the common ground of, of problem solving and heal the public divide that we're now experiencing in this uh, country. I'd like to uh, review for you uh, for just a moment the three components of a citizen leadership center um, so that you'll know just how this uh, new power is to be delivered. As you can see, the first um, is an online uh, leadership course. Um, they, these are video courses, very easy for anyone to take even on your smartphone. And they're offered to the general public um, on the continuing education programs 
of the uh, uh, colleges that are part of this new uh, national effort, and also on the Citizen Campaigns portal. The second component is leadership training um, that will be offered in undergraduate courses. And you're gonna hear from a couple of the professors uh, that are already beginning this training uh, for their students. And last but not least, our on-campus civic trust. Now, civic trusts are places where uh, citizens who've received the beyond the ballot uh, a training in, in uh, practical problem solving can meet in a no blame environment and work together to solve problems in their community <clears throat> and share them across the country in order to impact um, our, our uh, challenges on a national scale. Uh, these citizens meet in monthly solution sessions and uh, we've been piloting them for some time, so we know that they work and people really enjoy working together when there's no finger pointing going on. You know, for, for too long, we, we've been spectators uh, in, the, in, the, in, this, in, in our democracy. Uh, it's just been the nature of things. We, as I said, we vote and pass our power over to our officials. And what we've been doing recently is we've been watching our country be torn apart by ideological extremism, and by the blame game politics that's far too dominant these days. But now we can take personal responsibility to correct that. We don't have to be spectators. We can become players in the game of healing our democracy. So we're gonna learn about new powers in the training that is provided. Uh, most people aren't aware that uh, since the turn of the century, there are new legal rights that citizens have that allow them to have access to the details of current policies so they can see what's working and what's not working, what's costing too much and so on. And they also have the power to present their own solutions. We all, in the past, we could only comment on illegal proposals, but now we can initiate, we can become citizen leaders. And last but not least in this power range, we have advances in technology. The search engine is the primary one. I mean, in the past, if you wanted to develop a solution, you needed to have an administrator or someone uh, do a comparative analysis of what's out there and what's working. But right now you can just type your issue in in, in, a, in a search engine and in minutes, you're gonna find solutions that are working in other parts of the country and in other parts of the world. And you can import these evidence-based solutions in a cost-effective way into your own community and share them across cities all over the country. That's the essence of this no blame problem solving. You know, the citizens that we piloted this with uh, have already passed over 300 local laws. They've, they've attacked issues like climate change, uh, policing reform, uh, government contracting. Think about it. We're about to go into major infrastructure spending. Wouldn't it be good if we could have government contracting reform to make sure that every penny goes to the infrastructure and not just to political contributions? These citizens who pass so many laws have done so at a rate of over 90%. Now that might shock you. A lot of time uh, citizens make proposals and they go nowhere. But the training that we provide has been developed by practitioners who've had years of success in getting things done in their own communities and beyond. So they give you the kind of techniques that you need to be able to make things work. And, and they, the citizens have been embraced by the local officials that they presented their uh, solutions to because they're not coming in with blame and finger wagging. They're coming in with cost-effective evidence-based solutions. That's what allows them to work together, even across political differences that we may have. I'm gonna give you just a few sampling of the tools that the uh, citizen leadership centers employ. One is a, a citizen's leadership manual that will introduce you to the art of no blame problem solving. It's published by Rutgers University Press. And uh, believe me, it's, it's more powerful than the training manual that you have to learn to drive your car because you're gonna learn to drive your country. The second is um, these sets of 10 online videos. These videos are five to 10 minutes in length and they have corresponding chapters from the leadership manual. So you can <clears throat> be waiting for the dentist and empower yourself. It's not something that uh, takes a great deal of effort, but if you do uh, uh, take the online course, you're issued a certificate of training in leadership and no blame problem solving. 
And another one of the, I'm not gonna go through every one of the tools, but one of them that's very important that I have to mention before we go on is that there's a national solution sharing platform. And what that means is that when you can come up with a solution in your own city or town or borough, you can put it on the national solution sharing platform and citizens all across the country can have access to it. So a solution in one town can have national impact. There's real power in these citizen leadership centers. Today's 10 are just the beginning. We plan to develop at least 100 in the next two years. And someone might think, well, that, that's, that's a difficult uh, endeavor. And, and to, to be sure it is, but if we all pitch in, we're going to get there and we're gonna have help. We're gonna have help from our partners, the NFL Alumni Association, who is promoting these citizen leadership centers nationwide. And we're gonna have help from Campus Compact, a partner of ours um, who uh, has been in operation nationally for over 33 years and has nearly a thousand member colleges. So this is not something we're doing on our own. This is something that we're doing with the force of broad national partners. And we're being promoted by national allies. One of them uh, is uh, Robert Putnam. You might have heard of him. He was the author of Bowling Alone, and he just wrote a new book uh, called The Upswing. And what Robert Putnam, who's uh, received the uh, um, a Medal of Humanities, the Presidential Medal of Humanities said about these citizen leadership centers is that they're just what we need to rekindle our American values and generate the new leaders and ideas essential to meeting the challenges of the 21st century. So please visit our leadership training portal. Learn about your power beyond the ballot so we can come together as a country on the stage of practical problem solving and heal the divide that we're now suffering. You don't have to suffer frustration anymore. You, you can learn that you have more power than you think you have. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Harry, for sharing with us. And we're thankful uh, with you, Harry, the team here at the Citizens Campaign for the three colleges that we have representing today. And they're going to talk about um, their involvement, how they're going to implement um, partnering with us, our um, uh, leadership centers. First, we're going to go down to Houston, uh, Texas. I'd like to introduce Veronica Rayner. She serves as an associate chair there um, at the Houston Community College in their department of government. Veronica, we're so happy that you're with us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'd first like to thank HCC's Vice Chancellor of Instructional Service, Dr. Norma Perez, and her executive assistant, Ms. Yomara Guerra, as well as the government department's chair, Dr. Kim Miche, and Ms. Dana Sturdevant, the program director for community programs, for their support in making power civics a reality at HCC. Teaching power civics will be vital to our students and surrounding communities because I, I believe, I really believe that participation in our democracy doesn't end with voting and that's where it begins. The training provided through the Citizen, Citizen Leadership Center will help our students and members of the community with this realization by showing them how to participate effectively beyond the ballot and working together as problem solvers on the challenges facing our communities and the nation as a whole. I am using Power Civics Leadership Training as part of the course I'm currently teaching, and the students are learning how to devise and present an evidence-based solution to challenges facing the city of Houston, from better access to healthcare for immigrants and women to community-driven environmental policies. I, am, I also look forward to establishment of the Civic Trust based at Houston Community College, and this will enable our students and communities to identify, to adapt, and to advance these evidence-based proposals to the problems facing our city, as well as to help them work together with people of differing opinions to reach common ground. And in doing so, then they will amplify the political power that is um, at their fingertips and will go on to actively shape not only our cities and states future, but also our nations. So thank you so much for this opportunity. 
for us, it's a great opportunity, Veronica. Thank you so much. Next, we are going to Chicago, Illinois, and I'd like to introduce Jennifer Mason. Jennifer serves as the Vice Chancellor for Legislative and Community Relations at the City Colleges of Chicago. Jennifer, I have a question. City Colleges, more than one? Yes. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Uh, city Colleges of Chicago has seven city colleges wow. within our district. And Harold Washington College is our college that is located in downtown Chicago. Great. Um, and so I want to first start out by thanking uh, the president of Harold Washington College, Dr. Daniel Lopez, um, and the chancellor of City Colleges of Chicago, Chancellor Juan Salgado, for recognizing the importance of having such a course made available to our students. Um, Harold Washington, along with other city community colleges across the nation, you know, we really serve as centers for, uh, you know, the broader community. We educate students. Um, for our, for our students, we educate students that come from a predominantly low and middle income families. Um, they're also often faced with more challenges, raising families, trying to work at the same time. Uh, and they range in, aim, in age from high school to senior citizens, um, folks who are being retrained, looking for new jobs and careers in this constant changing economy. Um, and we provide continuing education for adults that are looking to enrich um, purpose and, and ways of serving their community. We know that students um, and the public at large uh, are committed to improving the city and the nation as a whole. And so this is really, really important to us. Uh, establishing a citizen leadership center at Harold Washington College will help us to fulfill um, this critical mission. It will empower our students and um, any interested members of the community. Um, it'll be effective. Uh, and we um, really want our, um, our students to think beyond you know, the ballot. I think um, what was mentioned earlier uh, by Harry about just knowing what your options are um, beyond you know, election day. And we have taken um, this very much to heart. And actually in my, um, in my department, um, we brought on a director of civic engagement uh, last year. So that's just how important this is for us. Um, we've made significant gains in terms of getting people to register to vote and turn out um, through the leadership center. We can get people to take the next step um, after the votes are counted and identify, adapt, advance evidence-based solutions um, designed to address our cities and the nation's biggest challenges. Uh, and empowered and involved citizenry is essential, is a very essential component of a strong democracy. Our citizen leadership will provide the tools and opportunities for everyone that's interested to exercise their full power and take responsibility. So we are very excited to be part of this. Uh, and thank you so much. And we thank you, Jennifer, and the City Colleges of Chicago. We're gonna go now to Bakersfield College and with us is Alan Bolnar. He's professor of political science there at Bakersfield College. Alan, thank you for being with us uh, early in the morning for you. <laughs> it's not too bad. It, it, it's about 10, a little after 10. So it, it's plenty late. It's all right. <laughs> great, great. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, I, I'm, we're really happy to be involved with the Citizens Campaign. So as you mentioned, my name is Alan Bowler. Uh, I'm professor, professor of political science at Bakersfield College. For those of you who don't know, Bakersfield is about two hours north of Los Angeles. And we're located in the Central Valley of California, which is really an abundant place with tons of agriculture and resources and oil and all the kinds of things that are used to, 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 to make a lot of valuable things. But in many ways, it's kind of an underserved area. You know, large parts of our community <clears throat> and our county don't get the resources that they need, even though they're providing these things to the rest of the country and the world, whether it's healthcare and you know, outside investments for businesses, whether it's uh, political participation, you know, ed education. These are things that 
that, that we don't often have enough of. And Bakersfield College feels like it can be part of the solution for improving those things. Um, in fact, one of the statistics that I often cite is that the 23rd Congressional District, excuse me, the 21st Congressional District of California, which represents part of Bakersfield, has the lowest voter turnout of mm -hmm. any congressional district in the United States. Wow. So one of the reasons why we're so excited about working with the Citizens Campaign and establishing a citizen leadership center is to have the opportunity to do something about that, to not just you know, teach civics, which is what I do, but to live it. And we believe in, in, in our community and we believe in democracy. And we know that for democracy to work, it has to be based in the community itself. It has to be based in the people who live in the community. You know, democracy is going to be rebuilt and renewed from the bottom up, you know, not from the top down. It's not a gift that's going to be given to us by some sort of, you know, beneficent overseer. It's something that we create. And so one of the, the reasons that, that this, this opportunity, I think, is so valuable and has been for us is it gives us an opportunity to teach, you know, real people, students, but also just the members of the community who want to know how they can improve their local school because they're worried about the quality of their kids' education or how they can do something about the roads or the issues that they face. It's a question I get all the time from students. Like, hey, it was great learning about the First Amendment and the Bill of Rights, but, but how do I actually make a difference? And so that's what I think is really exciting. We've been using the Power Civics material and we are super uh, pleased to be involved with the establishment of a Bakersfield Civic Trust. Um, these are some of the things that some of the resources and values that we kind of are looking forward to and, and are already pleased to be able to do. We certainly are happy, um, Alan, to have you as one of um, our partners and where our um, centers will be housed at there in Bakersfield. Um, you, in your presentation, unpacked some of the ways in which we can make our communities better, whether it's education, uh, whether it's infrastructure. Um, thank you for that. Um, in your role as um, professor of political science, um, and you mentioned that you are using um, some of the civic power material already. What is, and, and I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get to the questions um, that our media individuals have presented to us today, but talk a little bit about the response from some of the students that are experiencing um, and, and in these courses. Yeah, so it's been pretty positive. Um, a lot of them initially are kind of skeptical, <laughs> and uh -huh, to, be perfectly, uh -huh. to be perfectly honest, because like, what is this new thing? And, you know, and so a lot of them are like, I wasn't really sure what to expect. But by the end, a lot, there's a very positive response in terms of a feeling that I actually know kind of a practical step of what I might do to make a difference. And I think that's one of the things when you're thinking about how to implement material, there's kind of the, 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 the academic, you know, these are the, the, the textbooks that we need to use. These are the things you need to learn. But I think what's a little bit different is the, the attitude and the, the goal is something of this is what you want to do, right? This isn't just something that you're learning. It's something that you're going to do. And I think that feeling of being empowered, which is kind of a buzzword, but it's a real thing, right? It's a feeling that now I can do something. And I think that's kind of the response that we're getting, you know, from the students and from the people that have been involved with this so far. Great, great. We're excited with you. Harry, um, one of the questions that we have is uh, about the civic trust that will be set up. Um, and, and before, and I'm going to relate something that you said previously, you said we will now have an opportunity to be in the driver's seat. We'll be able to drive the country. Um, so are we learning how to drive the country in these uh, civic trust, as well as the courses and, and uh, the schools that students will be attending? Yeah, the, the, the basic structure is that the uh, citizens who are trained in no blame problem solving uh, in the courses offered online and in the, uh, at the college can then apply if they like to serve for a year at a time as civic trustees. Usually there are about two dozen trustees in the civic trust at any point in time. They meet in monthly solution sessions. They pick the issues that they want to attack 
And then they start searching for evidence-based solutions that might be working in communities similar to their own. And then they import them into their own community. They follow our 10-step ten, ten no-blame problem-solving method. And that's why they have such a high success rate. I'll just give you one example. In, in one of the uh, uh, other uh, citizen leadership centers just outside of Seattle, the students noticed that uh, COVID had uh, caused the closure of a couple of uh, motels and that there was a homelessness problem. And they looked at uh, solutions that were working in other communities where they could acquire the motels and use them for people who were intractably homeless, people who had mental health or drug addiction issues and where they could get services. And they found that this would reduce the cost of homelessness care in the city. So they had a cost-effective evidence-based solution. They presented it to the interim mayor and a council person and were applauded for bringing a solution that was really doable to their own community. Great, great, great example. Harry, in a, in a minute, in one minute, um, I'd like to bring another question to your attention regarding public safety. But um, Jennifer, you mentioned that you all have brought on um, an individual to head up um, the, the civic um, department. Could yeah. you just explain a little bit more about the role of that individual, please? Sure. Um, well, we actually brought the person on at the beginning of last year, and we had these grandiose plans of really digging into um, helping our students, faculty and staff um, navigate through the upcoming election. Um, uh, the census was, you know, hot, a very hot topic at that mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. And we had established um, uh, City College's ambassadors, which were students, faculty, who were interested in really championing some of these efforts that we were working on. And so this person was to help uh, kind of move all of this forward. And then she came on the day that we went into lockdown uh, in March. I think it was like March 13th. I think that was the date that everything kind of shut down. And we immediately had to pivot but it still didn't stop all those things from happening. Census was still going to happen, pla ha take place. Um, you know, the election was still going to happen. There were so many things that were coming up that still needed attention, but we had to focus in first on getting everything kind of um, shifted over to prepare for this COVID lifestyle that we were going to have to be involved in. Uh, but then once things kind of started to settle out in the summer, we began to really focus in um, on the census and on the upcoming election and really educate our student faculty and staff on what resources were out there, um, how they could be a part, um, where there were opportunities to volunteer, um, how they could be involved in those processes. And it just proved to be really important to everyone who was involved. And we knew that we were missing that component and my team was trying to work on it as part of our outreach, but we really needed a dedicated person. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, she's not with us anymore, but our new director of civic engagement starts on Monday. And um, we're so excited to bring him into this process uh, and be part of what's going on here and continuing to move that forward because um, people still, you know, they want to be involved. They want to be part of something that is bigger than themselves. Yes. And our student population is no different. They, they want this. They want to learn more. And we are very excited to be able to offer this to them. And I'm excited to have it kind of come out of my department. Wonderful, and we're excited to hear that coming from Chicago. Uh, Veronica, um, we've heard about students in California, Illinois. What about there in Texas? Talk a little bit about uh, your students there that you're serving. Sure, well, we have an incredibly diverse student population. Um, and we also have a high international student population as well as DACA students. And so when we are looking at the community problems that they're interested in, there's this international component to them. 
And so what I think that's so invaluable about learning the power civics process is that they're really learning how to problem solve these 21st century wicked problems that we have. Um, and they are learning how to dissect what seems to be kind of these insurmountable international problems that you know, your, your regular, you know, kind of we the people folks don't have access to power to address or um, don't have seats at the table to deal with um, and effectively. Um, and so they're able to look at these wicked problems and figure out how do we find um, a really specific way, an innovative way that is evidence-based to um, um, address these problems locally. So they really learn how to think outside the box. They really learn, um, um, you know, kind of the, the scientific process at the same time. Um, and students are, you know, come back to me quite often over the course of this past year, just saying, you know, I'm, I'm applying these skills in my other courses. I'm applying these skills in the job that I have. Um, so they recognize not only empowerment civically in the civic arena, but mm -hmm. then also how these are just really solid problem solving skills that we need um, across all careers, across all types of problems that we have in our country today. Hey, that's wonderful to hear. I think I heard you say wicked. <laughs> yes. Problems. <laughs> I've, I've got to use that. And, and it is so true. So true. Harry, we have a question that's come um, and we're going to get to that public safety question also. But uh, right now, someone is asking, how was the first group of colleges selected and what was the criteria? Well, we have a selection committee and the uh, selection committee uh, was chaired by uh, Roger Smith, the former president of the American Political Science Association. And it had several other distinguished members, a former president uh, of Drexel University Online and uh, the president of the NFL Alumni Association and others. And um, the selection committee picked the colleges uh, for uh, their commitment to civic engagement, not just on campus, not just with their students, but with the broader community that they served. They also uh, picked them uh, for, and you saw a representation of that today, for their dynamic political science teachers. They wanted people who were willing to look beyond what we've learned in the past and learn the new ways for the 21st century. And we also picked them because they are in major media markets. And this allows us to promote citizen leadership centers across the country. Because if we're going to build a new national citizen leadership service, we're gonna need hundreds of these. And as I said, we have a minimum commitment to do a hundred more within the next two years. But I really believe we can do more than that as people join the cause and start to spread this ac across the country. It's really time for citizens to take personal responsibility for our democracy. Our elected officials, even if everyone were honest and hardworking, wouldn't be able to keep up with the problems coming across the tr transit in the 21st century. So we really need to add a new dimension of leadership, a citizen-driven dimension of leadership. And that's how we pick the schools and, and we're really thrilled to have them aboard. We certainly are extremely thrilled and happy that you are with us in, in what we're calling a, in a historic, Harry, I, I think that's a good word for today's press conference, a historic announcement coming out of uh, the civics, um, the citizens campaign. I'd like to take this opportunity to give our website address and that is the civics, the citizens campaign. Yes, we're talking about civics, but we're gonna repeat that. The citizens campaign.org. Visit us on the citizenscampaign.org. Harry, I'm gonna get back to you to talk a little bit more about um, the, the um, civic trust and what happened in the city of Perth Amboy, what is happening back in July, we saw the protest. Um, talk a little bit about um, the partnerships that's been established and where we are in this whole area of public safety. All right, in the city of Perth Amboy, New Jersey, uh, one of our citizen leadership centers is at Middlesex County College. And uh, the Perth Amboy Civic Trust is located on their Perth Amboy campus. 
And um, when the George Floyd incident occurred, um, there was a protest march uh, led by the frontline youth. This is the uh, uh, youth component of Black Lives Matter. And it was a peaceful protest. Um, and the protesters drew up a whole list of demands, but didn't quite know what to do with them. And they met with a, a leader of the NAACP who happened to be a civic trustee and came to the Civic Trust of Perth Amboy, some of them even joining the Civic Trust. And they began to use the no blame problem solving process. And we have three guidelines. The guidelines are that the, the solution has to be based on evidence of success in other cities. It has to be cost effective. It can't raise the budget and it has to benefit the community as a whole. And they came up with a culture change policing reform that not only eliminates the excessive use of force incidents, but it also reduces police injuries by 36.2% and saves millions of dollars by eliminating the excessive use of force lawsuits. So working on this 10 step no blame problem solving process, the protesters became leaders and work together. Now the police chief has endorsed the solution and it's before the city council for adoption in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's, it's historic and it's now because of this solution sharing, it's spreading to cities like Newark, New Jersey, Trenton, Philadelphia, Patterson and so on. And it's really quite simple and quite elegant in the way that it works. Thank you, Harry. I'd like to remind um, Alan, Veronica and Jennifer that we along with Harry, the team here at the Citizens Campaign is ready, we're ready to assist you in your endeavors of establishing, building those um, citizen leadership centers. Um, thank you again for being here with us uh, on this press conference. If any of you have any additional statements that you'd like to make at this time, please feel free to do so before we close out. Um, and, I'm going to say and, one thing. Yes, if you're interested in bringing the power to your own community, approach the people, the political science professors, department heads, presidents, and trustees at your own community college, and we'll build a new national citizen leadership service from the bottom up. Yes, we will. And, and uh, from the bottom up, um, in this 21st century, is what it's going to take. To, to take, as, as Robert Putnam says, to take us from a, an I society to a we society. We're on that track. And we certainly do thank you, Alan Bolar, for being with us, Jennifer Mason, Veronica Reyna. Thank you all. Harry, thank you. And how proud, how honored I am to be a part of this great team. Thank you all for uh, attending this press conference. As we mentioned in the very beginning, a press release will be sent out immediately following this conference. Uh, look on Facebook, share it, uh, like it, stay with us on Instagram as well. Thank you again for being here with us. We are the Citizens Campaign announcing this great initiative of opening citizen leadership centers in 10 cities and looking forward to doing more in the days ahead. Thank you again for being here with us.